you look fucking legit, you're getting out there, blah, blah, blah. So follow those three steps and you'll be rich. <laughs> and now, introducing the champion of Rise, we are live. It's time. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another High Rise podcast. This is season four. Dude, we're back. When was the last podcast we fucking did? I have no clue, That had to be a man. year ago, do you think? In Green Street, probably. We did Wendy, maybe? So, like a year shout ago. Shout out Wendy That's from Space crazy. Gems. Now, we're back in downtown. We're in a high rise. We're 26 floors up <laughs> in downtown LA, so the high rise podcast Fitting. is official. <laughs> and we're back. Yeah, so game plan, we're gonna try to get back on the get back on the pod and get these consistent episodes cranking again, try to get some cool guests lined up, keep this shit fucking pumping. So sorry for a little uh, stale today, but get back in the get back in the swing of things. <laughs> gonna get back in the groove. Yep. And we're back. I'm back from a nice little sabbatical in the far east. And Aaron went to Hall of Flowers. So how was this Hall of Flowers? This is the first Hall of Flowers? In Ventura, California, it looked amazing. The venue looked great on the beach. Palm trees, Jackson got the drone shots. Um, the boys shot all the keynote speeches. How was the event? Yeah, so this Hall of Flowers, I think might have been, might have been my, I think it's probably like my second favorite one, maybe. I feel like the first was like, one of the river, like first couple of river ones were like obviously the most epic, but they had this new venue in Ventura, like literally fucking half a mile or not even like it's like on the fucking beach like right there super dope layout it's like perfect weather like the way that all the like um um what's it called the convention center buildings and like the whole layout and the flow was just like so much easier to just navigate and kind of like get through um they did a much better job this year of just like including community and just like all the homies were there didn't seem like anybody was like bummed out or mm-hmm. having a hard time like getting in and so that was all like pretty smooth. And then, yeah, we were there just doing our usual high rise madness, just filming shit. We did like all the panels and recaps, client stuff. Um, but overall, dude, I think everybody overall was like pretty impressed by like this year and was like, you know, the last like maybe two before this where it was kind of like, kind of like losing a little bit of steam and energy and whatever. And it seemed like it's kind of like revitalizing it with like mm-hmm. this one. So that was super dope. Um, and then we did, two after parties for the Hall Flowers on the first night um, with like Canna Craft Homies and like Be Real and Bosky and a bunch of these dope brands that we work with. And I think that was like definitely our, probably our best after party, best like event after mm-hmm. party I think that we've done. It was like insane. It was just like cracking the whole fucking night. Like it was just super dope. So fucking Hall Flowers back, we're swinging. Be back in September for the Santa Rosa one and love the Santa Rosa one. Yeah, fucking get back up on the kayaks, get back on the river. Got to get on the river. <laughs> yeah. All right. In terms of the show, what was what was cracking? Who had nice, who had sick booths? Did you see any products? In terms of like actual products and stuff, it, there wasn't really anything too unique. It's kind of the same same shit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like. There's a lot, I feel like there wasn't as many like new brands. I feel like usually when we go, there's just like a million brands we don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this year it was like, obviously there's some new brands, but it was just like, actually a lot of the like brands from last year were there, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. So it was like, I think they were worked more so this year with like working with brands. So maybe if they didn't have the $8,000 or $12,000, they I think had other, other options or they were kind of like, could be wrong, but I think they're working more mm-hmm. with like the brands to try to get all the right kind of like people there or whatever, so. It's kind of all the usual, you know, brands, all the homies. There wasn't a whole lot of like new stuff that really like stood out that I could think of off the top. Um, um, yeah, I don't it, know. Yeah, maybe it sounds like it's just a bunch of the brands that have just been surviving. Exactly. Because it's just been such a shit show the last exactly. two years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think like yeah, just overall like uh, at what's the word like uh, energy. Just at, like people were more uplifted and more like. They weren't so like, fuck cannabis industry, fucking this shit's the worst shit ever, like the last two years. Now it's like, there's like a fucking glimmer of hope or some shit almost, light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. Like, so like, yeah, that was, that was definitely cool. Um, But yeah, I don't know, product wise, I didn't really, nothing's the same shit. No, it was cool. Let's go back to the layout. Let's talk about the layout of a trade show or a convention or these just different venues. And you don't, I guess you don't really think about that. You know, we first going, to, we first started going to Hall of Flowers, or right. we're shooting all these events. So we're just going from this building to this building, and then yo, we got to go over here and shoot this, and then 
Marty's Marty's lighting the missile yeah. over here, and then all this stuff. So, and then you know the boys are we're all trying to commute, and we know a gang of people, so it's just stopping for conversation. That, that's that's so, the hardest part, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, talking about the layout. So how was it different versus the? Um, so it was just like it was uh, probably bigger. I feel like it was like one of the bigger. I think it was bigger than Santa Rosa, um, bigger than the Palm Springs one, I think too. But it was just the the you kind of like walk in, and there's just three main halls. One, two, three. Then there's a big like roadway strip or whatever, street, whatever you want to call it. And then on the other side, there's just one hall where they did all the speeches and there's a big grass area here. So it's like big ass grass area, everybody's hanging out, lounging, smoking. And there's the big outdoor booths like surrounding. And then directly across, there's the three halls that are all filled with booths. And then right here is the speeches and right here is the entrance. Mm. And so it's like so fucking easy. Cause it's like going to the hall, shoot the thing. Next hall, shoot the thing. Next hall, whatever. And then panels right here versus some of the ones it's like, one of the halls is over here, the other one's fucking half a mile over here, and the speeches are fucking half a mile over there, and so we're just running around trying to like navigate whatever, and this one it was literally just like, cool, walk over here, shoot it. It was just like so easy to just like navigate the fucking shit, you know? It was like How made it very it for simple, you guys like shooting. It was chill. I pretty much just stayed in the speaker panel. Oh, you were shooting, shooting the panels. The time. I'd pop out in between and like do a little drone flight or two, but um, I agree on the layout. I think it was um, pretty easy to get around, pretty easy to navigate. And, yeah. yeah. Especially when you're in there and there's like no service because there's a bunch of people and you're in these buildings. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So far. back to the events. Yep. So where was the event? What was the venue like? And who, you know, we threw it with Bosky, Capri. Yeah. So our event we did, uh, it was epic because we, we found this like super dope uh, Mexican restaurant bar like right in downtown. It's like needle in a haystack type of shit. We meet the owner and he's just like the fucking coolest dude. Like I want to be this dude when I'm older. Like he's like this like probably like 50 year old like middle eastern like indian kind of looking dude or whatever and just like super just like professional dress just like you can tell this was business you know but just like the coolest fucking dude he's like yeah hey, fucking smoking around carry like this is gonna be so fun he's like i fucking like you just tell these like parties like he's like wanting us there type of shit and we just end up growing down to them super hard and so it's epic club he just gave us like free reign to just like do whatever the fuck we want in there and like it was fucking epic so we had like i think there is uh, maybe one or two other like competing parties, but we had everyone, bro. It was like crazy. We had all, all the biggest buyers from every fucking store. We fucking beat. We had like, it was dope. We had a nice mix of like client shit, high level fucking people, and fucking homies. And it was just packed the entire fucking night. And it was, yeah, it was, it was killer. And the owner's just like, next year I'm gonna give you the whole fucking restaurant. Cause we only had the top like um, rooftop area or whatever. And he's like, basically saying we could just have the whole fucking three floors and just like run it up next time because that was the only thing that was a little small we couldn't like like rama couldn't even get in it was so funny because all these like fat cat big wigs like couldn't even get in it's like the funniest shit like sorry it's only your trade show you can't come <laughs> yeah. to the event sorry um but yeah so fucking um next year he's like yeah it's all yours so we're gonna try to like kind of establish that spot as like the flamingo of ventura or nice. whatever and then just fucking run all the shit there and it's like five minutes from the venue it's like epic Perfect. so um so yeah and then santa rosa we'll have to see uh what's in store for september what they got uh what's cracking up. in yeah. the 707 yeah so let's talk about events yeah so that's something we're gonna be focusing on a lot more i mean we've always been running up the events for the past what four years yeah it's five years yeah. but um let's talk about the importance of events before we drop yeah. our little news yeah i think that's like one of the number one things brands should be like looking at and like i think people just get intimidated or overwhelmed by the word or event or whatever they just think it's like has to be this big production and this crazy big like thing and it can be but in reality you just need a cool fucking environment and fucking maybe you know some weed and drinks and food or whatever and just like the right people it's all about the fucking venue and the vibe and just curating that and if you can do that then it's like if I was a, like if I was a weed brand or whatever with a budget and I was like what am I gonna do like every month every week event like number one for sure like it's just the number one way to like not only get your shit directly in the hands of fucking all the people that are gonna be buying your shit plus fucking meeting on the b2b level different buyers retail accounts whatever people coming through and then also your event is this whole content fucking engine that's just dumping creating content around the shit you're giving away or the fucking brands in your thing or whatever so 
there's just so much like value and use out of it. And then, you know, eventually you can start figuring out ways to monetize, whether you're selling your product or fucking sponsorships or food or bar or whatever. But yeah, I feel like just start it small and just easy and just don't overthink it and just like put a small budget in place. That'd be crazy. Like literally fucking thousand bucks. Like literally food, drinks. And like, if you have, even if you have your own office or your own dope warehouse, like start doing them there for 20 people, 30 people. Not whatever. even a thousand like, bucks. Like literally yeah. order some pizzas. It's, I think it's really easy to overthink it. Yeah. And we're like, we're going to throw this thing. We're going to invite 20 people next week. And then within that week, it's easy to just start coming up with all these grand ideas. And we should do this and we should get it catered. And it's like, no, at the end of the day, we're all stoners. We just want a safe space to just sesh, smoke, share terps, taste flavors, have good conversation, talk about the thing that we're all into. We have this common bond of cannabis and this community and this industry, the plant and the industry. And we just need a cool place to talk, or we just need a safe space to talk yeah. about it. So whether that's someone's backyard, you know, like Emerald Cup started in a garage. Yeah. You know, so yeah. just find a safe space, 20 people. It could be a potluck. It doesn't have to be catered. Yeah. And then just grow it from there, you know. And if you get to the third or fourth one, you can evolve and take it to the exactly. next level. But I think it just starts with, and, and it's, it's not even exclusive. Just keep it small. Exactly. So yeah. Even it's like, yeah, you can either just start with like, Invite all your fucking retail accounts. Invite all your top vendors. Like, mm -hmm. just start there. Invite your top fans or your top customers or whatever. Yeah, just start small. And, like, that's, like, kind of been our, like, longer-term strategy with these events. It's, like, the last three, four years of throwing them, it's, like, not necessarily, like, a revenue engine stream, whatever you want to call it, but more so, like, the main thing I left out is the data you're collecting. So all these events, like, every single guest that's signing up or coming through... You should be collecting their email, their name, their phone number, their title, their occupy, like all of the fucking info. And you're just building this master database. So like, cool, do these events consistently for a year, six months, whatever it is. And then after that, you're going to have literally the data of all these guests. So it's like with us specifically, I have fucking data and guest lists from four years. So now if we want to do a bigger scale event or if we want to do something bigger than just the backyard, whatever the thing, I already have the built in audience, which is the hard part. And then now we can go partner with dope ass venues and dope ass fucking whatever because we have the hard part to do down, which is building that database and that community and audience and whatever. So, which is invaluable if you're a brand because now you have this list that you can fucking email blast your products to, your new retail drops, your future events, like sell your fucking merch. Like, so that's like the most valuable thing in, in addition to those other couple things. But like, it's just, it's a no brainer. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and the data capture, it's, it's not that complicated, right? Because if we're having these events, you need people to sign waivers. People are already- You have to fill out the waiver or to, to RSVP or exactly. sign up. Like you need to give the email. Or it's like your lead magnet. Mm -hmm. It's like, cool, I'm gonna give you an RSVP to my event. You're gonna give me your name, email, and fucking brand. Mm -hmm. And then I can go and segment and be like, cool, occupation, buyer, purchaser, manager, owner, artist. And then I can segment that. And then cool, I know I had 32 buyers at my mm -hmm. event and fucking 19 owners and, and whatever. And then you can make custom branded messaging or campaigns to these different And we know who whatever, you, know. you are at our event. It's yeah. like if you don't, if you want to come to our event and you, I'm sorry, like you don't want to put in your email and who you are and where you're from, like we've thrown over 200 events and we've had no real problems because we're not letting random right. strange people into our event. Like there's some sort of tracking to yeah. who these people are exactly. if somebody's going to just go off in, in the, uh, at the event. So. Yeah. And that's how you can kind of like curate the vibe and, you know, like with ours, yeah, we go through the list and it's like, okay, like who's this random fucking like name that got the link somehow? Like, you know, like yeah. keeping away the random, you know, outside, like that was a big problem at the mansion the first couple of months was like, we were, we were not super focused on the wheat. We were, but we were also taking- Trying in, to pay this rent. Exactly, we're so we're booking parties with these like rent. Hollywood fucking promoter people and like this whole LA like network nightlife of these fucking like just crazy party Hollywood bullshit. And like you start bringing that energy in and it's a completely different vibe and energy than the weed. And it just starts like getting too like convoluted or whatever. So yeah, now we're just like more obviously, you know, curated in very fucking dial it in and have all the right kind of like, you know, homies there and stuff so convoluted it's a good one huh? that was a good one I'm <laughs> impressed hell yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah fucking so kind of with high rise event wise we're gonna like kind of like ramp it up but not like volume wise more like production wise i guess you could say 
just kind of like trying to just do more, you know, doper, unique things and partner with people to do so. Going back on like we have this list and we have the fucking attendees and we have all the ideas and and we've been doing it, you know, so it's like now we need to kind of like have all that down. And now we need to like take it to the next level in terms of like the actual event production and, you know, making them more memorable and, and exciting and, you know, different shit like that. So um, we got the 420 experience coming up. This will be the third one. That's so crazy. It's already the third one. We did the first one at fucking Green Street. Green Street, and the then second one, Two Bit, and then this year at the new spot. What's up with um, the uh, content from Two Bit? Oh yeah, so last year's 420 we did um, at the Two Bit Circus with Green Street, and that was also that was probably one of my top three, top five like events that we've done for sure. And uh, Hulu, we had Hulu there, the TV channel or whatever, like filming this whole reality show for. Uh, MMD, which is like one of the dispensary sponsors. So it actually comes out on 420. And I'm pretty sure we'll be like, we have to be in it. Like, at, like one of us has to be in yeah, it at one some of us point. Ha- in the background like, or whatever. Yeah, because they're filming for months at the building and they're filming the whole fucking event. They're hitting us up for footage and shit and like all this stuff. So that'll be interesting to see how that comes out on 420. Jackson gets some drone shots in, on Hulu. High rise goes to Hulu. Add it, add it to the credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Own a documentary to back to Thailand. Um, yeah, for real. <laughs> so yeah, four twenty experience. That'll be like kind of our next big one. Um, we got some exciting news too. We're gonna be opening a new venue in Hollywood. Um, not really gonna talk about it too much. We're trying to keep it a little, a little secret, a little private. But it's gonna definitely be one of the dopest things that we've done for sure. And we're gonna like that's gonna be our new kind of flagship for events and. Um, we'll be kicking it off with like a private 420 thing. So if you're if you're lucky, you might get the you might get the invite. Might get a golden ticket. Might get the golden ticket. Might get a, might get a key. Might get the key. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna do a soft open on 420, and then in June, the entire venue is gonna fully open for um, events, and it's gonna essentially be a creative space that will be able to host anyone in the cannabis industry for any type of event that they want to do. We'll be doing high-rise programming, and then we also have a bunch of fun, cool partnerships in place with different nightclub promoters, DJs, artists, and things like that. So kind of just trying to make this like dope-ass venue and bring in different pillars of entertainment and lifestyle. So we have obviously the weed shit on lock. We want to bring in some different music acts, DJs, artists, and then as well as fucking art, fashion, fucking whole kind of like cultural kind of spot with the underlying weed high rise kind of like tone to it so will it work i don't fucking know but it's gonna be interesting either way so (laughs) we got an opportunity (laughs) yes well yeah it's an opportunity you can't fucking pass up so we're hopping on it and fucking watch along which is luck (laughs) see what happens (laughs) so yeah we got that one and then right after that we're doing the trans bay Jimmy Devine. Shout out Jimmy, LA Weekly writer. Yep. You guys, so, you guys know Jimmy. He's been doing his events forever, and we've recently kind of been helping him out a little bit more, and now we're going to kind of help him out even more and kind of try to partner with him on some of his future stuff. And Jimmy's, like, super epic and just has this whole fucking different kind of audience than us, and he has all the kind of, like, core growers and, like, the OGs and, and just, you know, super respected, like, dope kind of like clientele network I guess you could say so um so yeah we're gonna be helping him out that'll be May 5th we're running that one so those are kind of our two next like big high-rise events um and then yeah we got other shit obviously scheming too but those are the first two so yeah (laughs) events a lot of shit so fucking events obviously we're gonna kind of like try to you know step those up a little bit uh you could probably expect maybe one every other month from high rise and then a bunch multiple throughout the month that'll be like co-promoted at our venue so keep a lookout for that boom we'll have more news and whatever fuck coming soon and then yeah events agency um updates with agency we've just been fucking cranking away doing a million projects crazy different projects working with hyper wolf did a bunch of stuff with american weed co Um, yeah you guys went and shot the the coverage of all the Cali Vibes Festival and got to shoot some of the fucking dope photos of like Wiz yeah. Khalifa and fucking. So uh, American Weed Co is like the first headlining sponsor to a like major festival or whatever. 
And they uh, sponsored Cali Vibes Fest in Long Beach a couple weeks ago, so it was just blasted. Like American Week on all the stages. Yeah, there was freaking um, Wiz Khalifa performing, and Wico, like dudes, some of the dudes from the different bands were rocking and Wico Murr. I think one of the dudes in the Roots had an and Wico hat on. Um, they had this giant 20 by 20 or 40 by 40 booth right by the stage, and it was, a week before the festival, we went to Big Bear for three days and went to the mountains and the desert and shot snowboarding and shot cabin stuff and shot hike freaking two hours <laughs> you guys, hot spring, you guys you know? did, did the and most. Like, did all this shit like a week before the festival, turned around all this fish and jack and turned around all the videos, fucking turned around all the photos. Their booth was just like Blasted, covered in yeah. all the photos and stuff. It was, it was, it was really cool. So they did that. Um, and uh, and we co did that. We got to help produce all the content for it, and um, they're really trying to show and that cannabis is just bigger than this little stoner shit, and they want to be a national brand. So it's cool to be able to help them try to put that on display. Yeah. And then we're doing some stuff with Hyperwolf. We've been doing some stuff with Hyperwolf the last six months, shooting a bunch of these interviews, um, little brand features. Now it's kind of like turned into like a little podcast thing. Um, yeah, I think they're like, we're doing a bunch of Hyperwolf shit. I feel like they've just, they're super smart about this, like their content strategy and they've always done a really good job. Like there's like a hand, like handful of pages where I'm like, fuck it, that's sick. You know what I mean? Like you just like have to give it fucking props because it's like so dope. And I feel like they just always had like epic, like dope animations and like the fucking cool video. Like their shit's always been super on point content wise, but there's just not a lot of like life or story or like depth like to it and so now with these new projects that we're doing with them they're they're highlighting all their fucking dope brands and their top brands and essentially doing like a 30 45 minute kind of like interview podcast kind of like sit down to get the brand story tell the story of the brand where they came from the products the blah 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 so customers can now kind of like learn and understand you know what they're buying who they're supporting and kind of like the backstory of all these brands and it's dope because it's like Hyperwolf gets all this fucking dope, um, all these dope clips to post, but then they can also give them all to their brands to post, which fucking promotes Hyperwolf, and it's like this nice, like, kind of back and forth. Collaborative effort. Exactly. Um, so I thought that was like, I don't, there's not a lot of brands that like really do that, and for them to like see the value of that and invest in it, I think is like super smart and epic, and now they're just gonna have literally a library of fucking brand videos that can now live on their website, on their YouTube, and they have all this micro from it for their IG, for the client IG, or the brand IG. And like, yeah, I think more brands should like definitely be doing that. Like, Yeah, I think the, the content in 2024, even 2023, that's really cracking on social, it has to have audio. Yeah. Whether it has captions, people are listening to it, you know, on mute, or whether it's just gotta be more engaging. Um, and a lot of brands are just doing visual stuff and it just takes a little bit of extra work to just add the audio to it. But, you know, now with these these DJI mics or the newer mics are even cheaper, just clip it on your hat or like how everybody does, clip it to your iPhone. I think like that type of content, it do, it is just more engaging. You're yeah. gonna get more attention rate on social. And it's more interesting. It's like, I wanna know fucking how, what's her name, the Norma or whatever? Who? Bertha, Norma? Who? Norm, Dr. Norm, what's her name? Um, uh, fuck, it's on the tip of my Nancy, tongue. Nancy, Bertha. Uh, it's close, it's close to Bertha. Uh, uh, Roberta. 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 <laughs> what did I say, big Nancy boss. and Bertha? Rig, big Roberta. boss Roberta, dude. <laughs> She's the fucking boss lady, Roberta. It's like, I want to fucking learn how this chick like started in her, fo- what I, like, exactly. I don't know, it's just like, it's more interesting. You know? Or it's like, um, with Big Pete's treats, exactly. just like faces of 100 milligram exactly. Rice Krispie at the end of the episode. It's cool to see the fucking <laughs> face behind the brand or whatever mm-hmm. and like learn about, you know, so I thought that was like super interesting and they were smart for doing that yeah for sure. i feel like before we use social media is just visual right uh-huh. it's just photos it's just cool visuals but i guess in the past like year all these content creators through tiktok and everything are just realized we're watching now it's such so short form content we're not going to youtube necessarily for the how to make garlic shrimp noodles yeah or something now they're like getting that. the like, 30 like second on version on fucking TikTok. feed like, you yeah, know um, exactly. how to do this how to do real estate how to what to do what not to do when you're investing like all sorts of crazy now shit now it's all so, just 10 second bits you could watch on TikTok for fucking mm-hmm. whatever yeah it's like you know so yeah yeah I think just that type of content is just so much more engaging or for example when we've done at the event went around and like asked questions to a yeah. couple of people at our event and those reels like cracked the yeah, fuck yeah. Off, you know yeah yeah so 
yeah. I think that's something that like we need to focus on more. But seeing Hyperwolf and everybody else do it, <clears throat> yeah, is I think it's very effective. Yeah, I thought it was super smart. It's just like a good way to like maximize your content too, because it's like <clears throat> can do these one, you know, forty-five minute whatever the fuck, and then from that get like six, six to eight micro depending on the episode, and then also the long form, you know. So it's like. I don't know, it's a good way to like maximize your content, tell the story, kind of kill five birds with one mm-hmm. stone, kind of thing. Like, yeah, and it's, I think it goes back to that that Gary V model from 2015 or whatever. It's just literally giving value, and it might be blown out in that field of hustling, marketing, real estate, whatever. But in all these other fields, whether it's cooking or cannabis or uh, growing, cultivation, extraction, there's just so much value to be given in, for sure you know in these niche in these niche fields so for sure the, and the, it's like and that value could is even just given organically through the story of like mm-hmm. them just telling their story of how they did it is like can unlock a new way of thinking about how you're doing it or something mm-hmm. you know i don't know yeah um, it's like what Roe bmc was doing in his captions a couple years ago but just you can now do it just put yourself on camera just put your phone yeah and then just add the captions in ai and like get a little hundred dollar newer mic yeah yeah, so fucking, yeah, I've been busy with Hyperwolf. Um, we did a huge fucking campaign with Steezy that was like pretty epic and pretty funny how it came about. So we worked with Steezy for five, six years whenever they launched, like literally since day one. And about two years ago, they hit me up and they're like, hey, like we want to start developing all these brands under our umbrella that aren't Steezy. So they want to make like an edible brand and a fucking drink, whatever, all these different brands that aren't Steezy, but they're Steezy kind of thing or whatever. So we fucking, I designed him this whole fucking gummy line for edibles, like uh, go back and forth, like for like a month, send him all this shit, whatever. Like, seemed like they were like stoked on it, whatever. He's like, he's like, maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't kind of thing. Don't hear anything for two years, two and a half years. Then they hit us up like, yo, we're about to launch our new, uh, our new blunt wraps, like blah, blah, blah. We want you guys to like be the, to do the camp, the launch campaign or whatever. So like, all right, dope. So they sent it to us, like, open the fucking box. And it's fucking our design from fucking two and a half years ago that I made for the gummies that ended up pulling, do you have the box? Right so we fucking opened the box. We were like, oh, uh, I'm like, it looks kind of familiar. Uh, like, it's a basically two out of the, yeah, two out of the five. So the blue Raz and the sweet sour green apple, these are both actually gummy edible designs for a steezy edible brand three years ago. And then they just ended up using it for these fucking blunt wraps and we had no idea until they came out. And so like we get them and we're like, oh, dope. Like we designed the new Steezy blunt wrap packaging, like to add that to the resume. So epic, we did the Steezy blunt wraps. Little oh. feather, little feather in your cap <laughs> yeah, right there. I thought that was a cool one. Um, but anyways, so they're like, yeah, we want to obviously blast this out and start getting this out to the community or whatever. So Steezy's always done a great job, obviously, fucking marketing their shit. They've always been super on it. Um, and so this time, typically when we do influencer campaigns, it's like a budgeted campaign where, you know, the brand will be like, I have, you know, $5,000 to spend, whatever the number is. And we'll kind of work backwards and be like, okay, cool. We can get you guaranteed posts on these eight accounts, 10 accounts, whatever the number is. This time with the Steezy campaign, we did it a little differently. And we're like, yo, just give us a budget and we're going to just fucking send and seed these to every influencer, every contact on our list but we're not going to guarantee you shit we're not going to guarantee you that they're going to post any of it but we're going to send instead of sending eight guaranteed posts we're going to send a hundred i think we sent like 150 we're going to send 150 non-guaranteed posts to all the homies and all the influencers and whatever with the intention that they're going to be stoked on it and fucking post it or whatever and so that was like the first time really we've like tried that kind of like strategy and it ended up working way better than we thought and we ended up getting like over 50 or 60, maybe more. We got a fuck ton of free posts, like insane amount. Like, so it was like nuts. Oh, like High Rise did. Like High Rise also got tagged in all the- That, that part too, yeah. yeah. Well, it was like, that's like the bonus of like our shit. It's like, people want to post it because it's like, oh, High Rise sent me some shit. It's like a little flex for them. Mm-hmm. And then it's also sticking to like, and you know what I mean? Expect it's like a win-win. Win. Win. Yeah, expect it's like whatsoever. such a win-win, yeah. But like, I, I don't know, that, that kind of just opened my eyes. We're going to kind of like, start building this program out a little bit more because it's just like the amount of exposure and reach and and content back that was generated off all that was just like 
10x what the fucking value, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like stupid, so. Yeah, so just seeding over influencer marketing campaign. Just thinking of it as seeding and like you're gonna get a bunch of, you know, hopefully you get a bunch of content back in. The power of user generated content is huge because exactly. content takes time to create. Yeah. You know, like we all have phones in, in our heads and in everybody's heads, everybody's marketing heads. Like this shit just creates itself. There's templates, it's all this stuff. It does, but it, it adds up. For sure. And it takes time. For so, sure. Just having a database of user generated content that you can just pull from and sprinkle through, and then it's social proof that all these other people are rocking with your shit, and all these people that are in that niche are rocking with your shit. Like, there's, there's just so many layers of value to it. It's like you're getting all the fucking, you're getting all the promotion, you're getting all the awareness, you're getting all the tags, but then exactly, you're just getting a whole library of content that's created from legitimate people in the industry. So it gives you credibility, it gives you a bunch of dope assets and content to post that you don't have to create or pay for it. And then you also get all the promotion and advertising out of it. So like, yeah, I think brands should definitely look into that strategy and don't even think about it in terms of like overthinking it or over analyzing it. It's like, it could be something very simple and very cost effective as long as it's intriguing. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't necessarily have to be like a fucking Rolex watch or whatever the fuck. But if it's like, if you get sent a box and it's like, this is a dumb example, but if it's like, this was a Ferrari, this box was a Ferrari, and the fucking door opened, and there's a, like, Joint whatever, yeah. that would cost you $2 to make the boxes, like, this is just a random example, but, like, just have something that's, like, Fidel's when you carrots. fucking open Fidel's it, like, you carrots. want to fucking yeah. take the photo of it and tag it, and that doesn't mean it has to be something necessarily expensive or, or yeah. whatever, but... I think brands could get creative with that and like run the fuck up if they're just- Easy's done the best idea, if yeah. done the, the best with it. And yeah. at the end of the day, these influencers, the content creators, they're looking to create content every too. single day. They need to put stuff on their feed every single day. So if you're giving them something that's cool and that is just gonna motivate them to create something engaging, it's like a no brainer. Yeah. It's like a perfect ecosystem working in harmony. Yeah. Um, and then also you get all the data too. So then you get all the fucking, you know, all the contacts from whoever the fucking campaign mm -hmm. like. And they know who your brand is now. Exactly. On yeah. top of that. Exactly. Now they know the most important people who know what's up in cannabis on social know who your product is. It's like the fucking, the, the three, the three step punch or whatever that we've always like, kind of like, whatever. It's like one step one is your fucking assets. Your visual is your content, your brand, like get that on point, make that sure that's a line. And then it's like two, it's like. You have your fucking digital footprint, you have your fucking, your physical, whatever, in, in life, whatever the fuck it's called. So it's like digital, you're just fucking blasting out to all of these fucking mm -hmm. influencers, building your online army, and then you can translate some of those to fucking in person and then mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. And then you're just getting product out, they're both creating content, they're both promoting, they're both fucking whatever. And then you have your base of dope content, dope shit, so when they're all visiting it, you look fucking legit, you're getting out there, blah, blah, blah. Follow those three steps and you'll be rich. <laughs> like, I like your explanation of it. Yeah. It sounded very... <laughs> do this, very that, this, out. and that. Aaron's just boop, boop, yeah. boop, infographic. Yeah, yeah that's how Aaron's brain works. Yeah, literally. It's like, oh. So some ways that like we've kind of been creative in the past with like... What do you call it? Influence? I don't even know what you call it. This is more so just like marketing hack or just like, right? Like what do you Yeah, mean? if we're, you know, on the topic of seeding, we were talking about seeding in our community. Um, this is like trying to grow outside of our community or let's say like back in the day we high rise started as a clothing company yeah so aaron's just has the merch in his back pocket and did that forever and that's how we started this shit and grew it so we're fans of some of these so so we were focused on that a lot like we're trying to pick up brands back in the day right we're trying, trying to, get to pick merch up business, clients yeah. we're trying to get merch business and uh, this was like 2017 and we're big fans of the fighter and the kid this podcast and they'd have all these comedians on like right when it sounds horrible yeah, like, no. job is so whack now <laughs> i was gonna drop Chris D'Elia's name which is just like he's canceled yeah but it was when they were having all these people on that were blowing up theo vaughn chris D'Elia when he was blowing up and we're huge fans we listen to the podcast all the time and we have embroidery machines and we were focused on hats and headwear so they come up with all these inside jokes during the podcast shab and cal and these guys and by the end of the podcast, they just bake these inside jokes and just beat them into your head. And they would do them every episode. They'd and they're be like, like three or, or four, two, and like then they just sure, keep yeah. them going. So Aaron just went on Fiverr and had all these logos made and just sent and DM'd them photos. So of I remember hats. it was like, it was the same day. So they did the episode, I think I was listening to it at work or something. And it was like, it was this whole inside joke about like, I don't even remember. It, it was, it was uh, steak and a dick suck. Steak and a dick zone and suck and suck zone. And suck zone, yeah. 
somehow they like just like joking whatever and like this whole thing about staking a dick suck and suck zone and like all this funny shit and they kept repeating it the whole episode and like i'm like huh i'm like i'm just gonna make a fucking hat that says staking a dick suck and like suck zone and just like put their funny ass things they keep repeating onto a fucking hat and so the same day i fucking make one sample or two samples of each of the sayings and i fucking take a picture of it i think no you took the dope picture of the steak and whatever with the hat and then i fucking go i just find brendan chobb's instagram account and just dm him and i'm like i'm like yo like what if i could put all your fucking inside jokes on hats by the end of that episodes each episode whatever something like that and he responded instantly and he was like i love it this is dope can you get me samples or some shit it is just like instant and then i think the next episode or the one after the hats I sent him were on the fucking coffee table in yeah. the episode, just chilling on the fucking coffee table. It was table. like one like, of the cracking Chris D'Elia episodes where it was like blowing up and you had, you had the Grand Hog Oso because Grand Hog Oso <laughs> yeah, was like was his nickname for, yeah. nickname for his brother. Yeah. So it was just sitting there and then he was like working out on his story wearing the Suck Zone hat. Yeah. It was like a Top Gun logo because yeah. it was like a dude got sucked into the engine of the plane. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. Jet, and they were calling it the Suck Zone the whole time. Mm-hmm. So it was like a Top Gun logo that says Suck Zone. Yeah. And he was like working out wearing that on his story and... We were just like going back and forth and you know, he had like a big cartel at the time and we were like, dude, like let's do a Shopify and yeah. all this. And then he ended up getting booked for the McGregor uh, Mayweather fight to be like an analyst and it was like his big break and then we kind of like lost contact. He just blew up. Like, Same with him. Two weeks after he just like blew the fuck up and just like, yeah. Same with the, the Matt Barnes. Same story. Uh, yeah, I was, where yeah. we, I was like photoshopped Matt Barnes um, with the Kobe flinch moment where he's like, yeah. Pump faking the ball at Kobe's face, and I just put a nug in his hands because I knew he was like starting to do weed shit. And we got in contact with him. We sent him some merch, made yeah. his shirt. He loved it, sent it to him, and he wore it on the first episode of uh, All the Smoke. Yeah, and so then, sick. And then he had Kobe on like the fifth. And Kobe, we need to get that screen grab. Yeah, Kobe passed away. That screenshot. I have it. I do have it, but it's like the mic is kind of like in the Locking way it. of the weed, so yeah. it just uh, the nug, so it just looks like the Kobe Flint yeah, shirt. But yeah, He was wearing it like shooting around with his kids. He was wearing the Rise Up hoodie, posting it. Yeah, wearing the and tagging us yeah. and stuff. And yeah. Same thing with that is he wore it on the first episode and it was supposed to just be like a cannabis shit talking basketball show. And yeah. it got picked up by Showtime and it's now That's one like of the huge, biggest podcasts. Yeah. So we kind of like lost that, but yeah. um, I'm sure we'll end up running into Matt yeah. sooner or later. But he was he was super supportive for that couple months. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That was and good then one we too, also yeah. have the uh, Dave Portnoy. And then, yeah, and then so like we did that one, we did that one. And then during COVID, uh, Dave Portnoy, the barstool dude, he's just like, starts doing these unboxings. He's just going viral as fuck. And all he's doing, because everybody's at home, he's literally just fucking going live on IG on his iPhone. And he's just fucking, people just start sending him shit. And it just turns into this thing where by like week two, he's literally getting like 500 to 1,000 packages a week. His entire apartment, it's probably like a little bit bigger than this. And it's just filled with boxes all of the way all the, sizes, all the way shapes. All the uh, hallway. The, like, like he, had, he literally had to hire like two full-time people to just like clear the boxes out and bring the mail in and shit. And it was just like, it just kept getting bigger and bigger because it going more viral or whatever. And then so it just starts getting ridiculous to the point where people are sending him weapons, people are sending him animals, people are sending just like everything like with the hope that he's going to open it on the fucking live stream and like shout him out or whatever. And so I'm like watching all these, I'm like, this is fucking hilarious. And in one episode, he says something, whatever, he's opening all the boxes. He's like, he's like I'm the box god. He's like, I'm the box god. He start, start, starts turning into this little inside joke. And I'm like, hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to just make a fucking custom box guide shirt and put a high rise logo under it and fucking mail it to the fucking unboxing and see if I can, like, finesse it. I'm like, I feel like if he opens it and sees it, he'll wear it. Or he'll at least, like, yeah. comment on it because it plays into his inside joke and it feeds his little ego and it's funny and whatever. And so sure enough, I think it was literally within 24 hours or maybe 48 hours. Like, it was literally, I sent it out and it was like the next day or the day after. And I'm no idea I'll go on YouTube and the thumbnail of the episode is fucking the screen grab and it's him wearing our shirt on the fucking thumbnail of the thing. And I'm like, no way. So I click it to watch it and like, sure enough, halfway in, like, gets the box, opens it, pulls out the shirt. He's like, holds it up. He's like, kind of like, and then he's like, box God? He's like, I am the box God. And he fucking takes the shirt out, puts the shirt on. And it's, I, I did it, I put a high rise bar logo, like super small, but like, so it wasn't like too promotional, whatever, but it was like yeah, definitely yeah. still there. And he ends up wearing the fucking box god shirt that's probably in front of like millions of people. I don't know how, it was probably worth like five minutes and put on another whatever yeah. thing, but like, same shit. It was just like play into their fucking inside joke and play into their ego and whatever, and make them something cool. And then it's like they're gonna wanna fucking whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know, that's like kind of the hack or whatever. So 
that one was like my favorite one though because like i love fucking dave portnoy and i like it was just like so epic i'm like i can't believe that actually worked well that's also it's just so Aaron's cool just like fucking... think of some shit and then 40 hours later yeah. you can say it works you know this is like, like you're gambler right here yeah you know what i mean yeah. like you're just like i'm gonna oh, i see this i'm gonna go make it i'm gonna yeah. go throw it at, i'm gonna throw this dart at the wall yeah. blindfolded to yeah. see if it works yeah. but like it's the same shit as like making the parlay or yeah like. exactly and then you just wait to see if he opens it exactly and it's exactly. like it's the same yeah. dopamine yeah. as the fucking no, exactly. gambler exactly it's so funny but exactly but it's for a bigger cause it's for, like for your brand yeah you know what I mean? yeah and so yeah we've experienced a few of those and they they almost feel like like could be make or break moments or relationships or whatever right but yeah. it's a couple of them have happened right before the timings are off that's, like that's the, been higher as number one yeah. problem our whole entire career is we've already just started too early like I was on the fucking Nelk Boys before fucking anybody even knew them like every single all these big every yeah. no jumper fucking like every not everyone but like yeah. how many of these fucking people Shopify. are we like on like way before and it's like I don't know. Timing's a bitch. It's always yeah, fucking like yeah. Yeah. just keep going until exactly you know, yeah until one of these things hits and yeah. smashes and yeah we can ride that moment. Yeah, out. we'll put the I'll find the clip or something. We'll put it up or something. The fucking Portnoy. It's on the his YouTube or some shit. And I have the uh, fighter and the kid photo on yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> and I got the map bar. So yeah, we'll add those. But yeah. that'll conclude this episode of the High Rise Podcast. We're back again. We're back. High rise, so it's official. We got Jesus counting bread over here. You know, he's looking over us, making bread sure. Up. He's making sure that we continue with the consistency. <laughs> These are uh, our accountability. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to be trying to have a bunch of guests slide through and chop it up and share their stories and value. Um, all right. Well, that was our first episode back. I don't know how that was. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Maybe there's some gems in there you could learn. Comment below. Let us know what you want to see. Ask us questions. Fuck yeah, it. who you want to see on this shit. Ask us questions below. We can address all sorts of shit when it comes to, or we'll try to, when it comes to the community or business or marketing or any of the knowledge we know we want to share with you guys. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, give us a like too. And maybe a comment. Come on. Come on. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and YouTube. Till next episode. Keep pushing, keep rising. We out.